When last we met our intrepid adventurers, they had been summoned to the Witch Cat Inn outside of a small village south of Uppsala. They had taken a carriage ride, a, a long three and a half hour trek through a torrential downpour and arrived with uh, muddy feet and, uh, and, and thundering hearts at the Witch Cat Inn, a, a small inn uh, located near a, a small church just outside of St. Tuna. Um, you all had gone inside and, and asked a few questions about uh, the goings on, the comings and goings here. You had uh, been introduced to a man by the name of Olaus Klint, uh, who had summoned you here in the first place with a flyer for a theatrical production that was to take place at the Witch Cat Inn. Uh, upon uh, asking further questions, you had um, you found a, a young woman in the corner who was not very forthcoming with any of her information, looking a little bit um, sallow and um, apprehensive. And you also ran into one of Per Hewlin's uh, colleagues, uh, Father Clarid, who divulged quite a bit inf of information to you about the goings on here at the Witch Cat Inn, particularly that many of the people who had come here as guests to stay at the inn had been subjected to very strange and dark dreams. Uh, dreams of um, murder and uh, theatrical productions and betrayal and things of, of that nature. Uh, you found out that uh, Sami, the innkeep, is rather a um, bad man. He uh, purportedly was so anti-theater and, and anti the arts and anti the occult that he uh, drove his wife away from the Witch Cat Inn and uh, she then cut her death on a sick bed um, while traveling with a group of actors. Don't trust actors. You also found out that the young daughter, Sophia, is the one who sent out the flyers in the first place. She had sent out uh, an invitation to a play that she's entitled The Dance of Dreams that tells the tale of a man named Oscar Hjort and his battle with the devil. You went upstairs, you found the uh, found your way into the locked bedroom of Nora, Sophia's mother, who has long since passed now, um, and found her notebook in which she had uh, outlined very detailed um, uh, instances of what she purported to be a haunting at the witch cat. She also outlined um, details about her husband's abuse and and uh, her nerves around protecting her daughter. Um, you all managed to just barely in time slip out of Nora's room undetected as Sami made his way up the stairs, uh, distracted by Per Hewlin's um, proselytizing? I don't proselytizing, know. Proselytizing, yeah. My, uh, sermoning? Um, that was good. That was good. Did I pick the right word, English English teacher? Proselytizing it as well. Proselytizing. Prostitutalizing. It's all my OnlyFans. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, you also then were invited by Sophia uh, to uh, attend the Dance of Dreams upstairs in the uh, shadow theater that she had built um, in the attic. And once you made your way up there, she uh, you found that the, the theater itself, it, it was built by a, a master craftsman, someone who clearly has known this art form and has done this for a very long time, is an incredible mechanized wonder of theater here. And as she began the production, you noticed that her voice changed, the lighting in the room got dimmer, the room got very cold. As you were recounted this tale of Oscar Hjort, his time spent um, in the theaters on the continent, specifically at the Palais Royal, which is where a lot of you had seen uh, a production of his, and um, and his fall into ruin based off of wartime, and his uh, subsequent um, retrieval from his uh, slovenly state by a man named Albert. Uh, as the story went on, you had learned that Oscar had been uh, had declined to do something, uh, and had been subsequently murdered in this. After the production had uh, taken place, you had heard um, 
a, a sort of ghastly sound as this massive revenant unfurled before you in this cloak with these this skeletal face and these massive claws and long fangs. Our dear doctor and our officer are considered terrified at this moment as this creature comes to life. Welcome back to A Dance of Dreams. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we yes. got a very wonderful donation of Troll Tooths by Varl, who donated you, Varl. a Troll Tooth to every player at the table. So thank you very much, Varl. Keeping us alive and in Troll Tooths. We, I mean, they're going to need them. <laughs> Why would you say something like that? What do you mean? As you see this creature unfurling before you. It leans down with long clawed fingers, one pressed up to its temple, staring directly into the eyes of Penny Hempsk. It's, as you, as it gets closer to you, you smell the rot and the decay rolling off of this thing. It's got this chill around it as it, as you kind of enter its sphere, and it is nose to nose with you. Reminder that this thing is upwards of 10 to 12 feet tall, so it has stooped down, and it's very angular and skeletal, and it says, my, my, Miss Hempsk, the spinster gossip with a bowl full of rotten apples. A penny dreadful indeed. Did the others know exactly what you did to extend the life of your withering fame? In for a penny, in for a pound, it seems. And it <coughs> turns its neck over to you, Officer Kensington, and it kind of almost spider-like shifts over right in front of you and you are stuck still shaking and panting you cannot move as this thing just creeps right up to your face passes your cheek and begins to whisper in your ear just barely audible for the rest of the people here in the room it goes <sighs> officer kensington perhaps the most cowardly of them all. Letting your own passions get the best of you, possess you to kill one of your most trusted people. <laughs> tisk tisk. You never did get over that night on the battlefield, now did you? Seeing your own men reanimating from dead flesh. Of course you're a little mad now, always on your little debunking witch hunts. But then, aren't we all a little mad? <laughs> Dr. Falk, as it kind of creeps around you and puts the clawed hands over your shoulder and leans into your ear. The physician of folklore. The medicine of mythos. And as it leans into your ear, kind of pressing into the nape of your neck, it says, I can smell the fay on you. I wonder what your beau would say when he should learn the truth about what you are. The long hair and beard do wonders to disguise your true nature. I would have thought you might enjoy a little family reunion. You know, fay to fay, as it kind of digs its claws in just a little bit too hard into your shoulder and releases and just stands shrinking down in size just in front of you, pair. Father Hulun, our man of the cloth, Using your saintly status to spy on parishioners. Hmm? <laughs> and how are those teas with Penny? Drafts aren't the only thing you've dodged. What would have happened that night, I wonder? 
Perhaps that little girl would have survived if you and Father Damien had done your jobs. Instead, you stand in terror once again. Let's lift your cassock and see what lies beneath your skirts. And as this happens, it unfurls back to its massive size and rushes at you. You feel this blast of cold air as you are knocked backwards and you hear the laughter ringing through the room as it whoosh, vanishes down through the trap door and you're left with the echoing reverberations of <laughs> Um look quickly around does everyone else seem to be okay everyone uh, does anyone seem to be hurt or on the ground or you do see that um anders and alexander are still frozen there in space i will ignore after i cast a suspicious glance at all my friends I will immediately jump behind the curtain and go see to Sophia. As you jump behind the curtain, you see her there on her knees, her hands splayed out and upward, her mouth open a gate. She's not moving. Um, can I do a... Uh, never mind, I don't have any medicine whatsoever. I'm like, Sophia, Sophia, are you still with us? Are you okay, child? And I will... You know, like, gently tap her face and sort of try to... She's breathing, yet unresponsive. Her eyes have closed at this point. Her mouth has kind of slackened a little bit, and she kind of slumps into your arms. Doctor! Doctor! Hop to it, man! Falk is just like... <laughs> Cut down to the quake. Um, Penny, I, who else is not frozen? Penny? What are you doing? Um, I am writing. I am jotting down every little bit of uh, what I can remember, every word, every uh, gesture and movement that this creature uh, displayed just now. Um, and as I'm writing, my face is just ghostly pale. Penny, um, never the... mind your blasted book. This child needs help. Uh, Herr Hulen, would you make an observation roll for me, please? I don't know, would I? It sounds, sounds like a trap. It's a tarp. It's a tarp. All right, thankfully I'm pretty good at this. Only one success, so not that good, I guess. Only, I mean, here, I'm, that's the thing about Vesson, right? Yeah, like, you only need the one, that's right. You only really need the one unless it's extreme circumstances, but... I, got one, um, I you, also rolled one die less than I should have rolled. Let me, go ahead and roll uh, another one, then. No, that's it. Just the one. You, you notice that Penny is pale. Uh, understandably so. You all look pale and shocked. Um, but as she's furiously scribbling, you're, you're noticing, like, she's, she's always had this kind of black ink, like, permanently stained into her fingerprints, but you're noticing that the ink isn't actually black, it's really, really deep, deep, dark, almost black red. No one else around you is seeing this. I... Seeing as how they're all kind of struck dumb and, and any sort of uh, is he doing anything, um, I am going to get up. I'm going to reach into my coat, pull out a little vial of holy water that I carry. I'm going to open it and I'm going to splash it in the doctor's face. Doctor, snap to! Come on, you're a man of reason. Supposedly you're a... a creature of some sort of alliance with this 
This devil that just assaulted us, you must be able to wake up, man. It's enough to rouse you out of your fear. What? Wake up, the girl. Uh, yes. Right. Um, he'll go over and then just sort of stand. I don't know what to do. I'm Pulin just kind of stares at you like. <laughs> you could certainly make a medicine roll. Um, if you have medicine. Yes. Hold on. Let me hold that bad boy up. Let's see if this will do it. My name is Doctor, but I don't have medicine. Oh no. Ah. <laughs> well. Uh, good while it lasted. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean, you have, you can roll, so precision plus medicine if you wanted to check to see what you might be able to do. Absolutely. Or what might and be going I, on. I'm going to use one of my toofs. Toof! For this one. Mm. Nope. Nope. No successes? Sorry. No, not a, not a one. As he's, you, sorry. I'm not a doctor. You're also apparently not Ender's Falk, it seems, but that is a matter for another time. I will take the rest of my, my holy water and throw it in the colonel's face. <laughs> Colonel, wake up, man! The field of <laughs> combat awaits you! Come on, grab your courage with both hands and... Stand up like a soldier. Does that rouse me? It certainly would. Okay. Uh, I am still imagining tr I'm trembling like a leaf still, uh, but I kind of will, will gain my bearings and kind of stop dissociating, I guess. <laughs> and uh, uh, where am I needed? Um, the girl right here. I assume you have some form of battlefield medicine knowledge. Yeah, I, th I think I, I hope I can do something. Um, I would like to check out what's happening with this young girl of 20? Uh, 16. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Got <laughs> real bad. Uh, medicine. So I don't know if my battle experience would be applicable to this because it's it's gain plus two to medicine when treating a physical critical injury is this would this count uh technically it's not a uh, no it would not count for no. this one although i do love that feature but if i take out my gun and start shooting at the colonel as he's trying to <laughs> then i think you lose your status as a canadian <laughs> Turn. Uh, I'm going to use my blessed because um, I need it. And I'm going to use the troll tooth in expectation. I'm, oh, I'll use, say uh, also that that troll tooth is the one that I prepared for. I usually, you know, I prepare uh, uh, my things for debunking magic tricks, but I also happen to be, scan all my like medical texts just for fun on a Saturday night. Um, so by the way, every advantage you take gives you two dice. Not oh, just two. One. Shit. I'm glad someone remembered because this whole time I was thinking it was one. Uh, technically, then Beth should have gotten another die, I think. I, I just rolled. I did. It was not good. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. That is two. Two successes. Uh, you, you kind of like not rudely, but you kind of move Dr. Falk out of the way and you like put your hand on her pulse and wait. Falk off. Yeah. Um, you put your hand on her, on her neck and you feel, and there's a very faint pulse there. And you like, you pull up her in her eyelids and you check her pupils and you see that they are reactive, although she is not very um, responsive at the moment. And uh, you scoop her up and you place her in one of the armchairs. She seems to have, um, lost consciousness, but that she is stable. Okay. All right, she's stable for now. Um, 
I don't know what va this vason might have done to her. Uh, so, is that something you'd know about, uh, Dr. Falk? Yes. Is that something, Dr. Falk? What? About whether... <laughs> <laughs> about whether or not this uh, this vessel would have done something to her or if there's something to be concerned about after that experience. I would say probably logic and learning um, would be my guess for role. I, I, I would ask, uh, what what's the long-term effects of that kind of influence a vessel would have? I'm going to use another tooth. <laughs> I love to. Yeah. We need a DD dice thing, but it just rolls like old rotten teeth on that. Gross. <laughs> we know dice makers. We can have them make gross teeth dice. I want that. <laughs> um, it's one success. One success. You've read about revenants, right? We've established you've read about them. Um, you have not, while there are other Vessen that you know um, for a fact would cause long term harm. Uh, or, or, or have a large influence over a vessel, uh, especially a young, influential girl like this. It doesn't seem as though that this would be lasting damage to her necessarily, but she's going to need to at least sleep this off. Okay. Um, I will relay that. Uh, we should get her out of here. Sh she should be okay, but we should move her. Get her away from dad and that thing, I think. Yes, 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 please. Um, I will uh, go and check on Penny meanwhile. Um, is Penny in some sort of trance or something like that, or just really focused? She's writing. Penny? Penny? Are you okay? Oh, oh yes. Yes, my friend. Uh, uh, this is just all so thrilling and uh, the perfect, the perfect plot for a new book. Now's not the time, Penny. We almost died. That that young girl almost died. Almost is not quite. We are all still here. That is very but cavalier you right. of you. You are right, and I'll slip my notebook into my pocket. All right, I suggest we leave the inn Perhaps we can find sanctuary at the church. Um, I'm sure Father Clawhead would put us up. Um, let's try and let's try and get out of here without arousing too much suspicion. Um, I, I'll look at my companions. Which one of us seems to be like the strongest build? I would physically, guess the Colonel. Physically strong. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, it looks like the um, officer, yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, Colonel, can you carry young Sophia? Um, Anders, would you mind going ahead and seeing if the coast is clear, or perhaps looking if there is a back way out? We'll try to slip out into yes. the darkness, and we'll take the girl to the church to Father Clarehead. Yeah, go uh, up. And sure. I'll sort of peek out of the room and start you scoop the young girl. She's very limp in your arms. She's very much not conscious at this point. Uh, Dr. Falk makes his way out onto the landing, stepping quietly. Um, what what order who follows suit? Well, before we step out of the room, um, say, uh, Pear, uh, Father Pear, uh, can, you, um, can you, do you have a jacket you can take off and just lay over her so it doesn't look like... Yes, uh, absolutely. I'll take off my my jacket and wrap her in it. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll follow after uh, Anders. And we have Father Hewlin and Penny bringing up the rear. Um, yeah, I want, when we step out, I want to uh, take a quick look down the other end of the corridor if there's like another set of stairs or something like that, like a back way out. No. There's not. Um, I'll crowd up at the corner, the front with... Um, Anders, um, what's what do we hear from downstairs? Um, before we get there, Penny, are you 
Are you following I, suit or where are you uh, heading? I would tell uh, Father Hewlin, I will be just one moment. I want one more look around. I'll give you a very stern look and say, This is very morbid of you, Penny. I've known you to be a morbid woman before, but this seems to be a little bit beyond even what. <sighs> Never mind. Do you do what you feel you must? It will be worth it, my friend. To whom is what I wonder? To all of us. I will step out of the room and follow the other two. Penny, what do you do? I want to use my automatic writing talent and channel the spirits, since I feel that the uh, the spiritual realm is uh, thin in this place. And so I want to um, use inspiration to get clues about um, the future or the revenant that we just um, encountered, anything that would help us uh, figure out where its bones might be or how to destroy it or etc. As you begin scrawling, you feel this sort of weight on your shoulder as if the equivalent of um, a house cat perching on your shoulder and you feel just little claws grip into and it leans in and goes, found something. Really? Oh. There's bad, bad man here, isn't there? There is. Oops. Looking to harm you all. <laughs> Come. And you feel it tug on your ear, and it pulls you towards a window in the attic. I will do as this spirit uh, bids me to do. And you peer down. Go ahead and make an observation check for me. Two successes. Two successes. As it yanks you, a little claw sinking into your earlobe and pulls you towards the uh, the window there. Um, you see it just go. <sighs> And it points with a clawed finger down. And as you peer around, it's it's dark, it's it's still muddy and rainy, but you see two wooden doors set at an angle with handles on them, like this, with a chain across it. Maybe there's something nice in there. <laughs> It'll be an excellent plot for your book, Penny dear, and you feel a little claw on your cheek. I do believe you are right. Well, go on then. See what's down there. <laughs> I will. And I will uh, go catch up to the others and uh, wait for a moment to tell them that I would like to go check out these chained doors. And you feel the weight lift off your shoulder as if this cat cat-like thing has alighted from your shoulder. And as you round the corner, you see everybody kind of gathered at the at the top of the stairs. They remind that the stairs go down. There's a landing and another angled set of stairs going down again. Uh, as you stop at the top of the landing, you all hear a deafening crash of plates and dishes coming from the dining room. I think... Uh after this encounter, my vision sort of tunneled a little bit too. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to catch up. I'm hearing this crash and I'm unsteady on my feet as I'm catching up to the others. Yes. So you kind of bump into the back of, of Officer Kensington there. What do you all do? Um, so we heard this giant crash coming from the kitchen, you said? From the uh, dining room, which is the area in which you had talked to uh, Father Clarid. You had seen Lisa, who is the young woman who is down there. Okay, I'll say, um, give me a moment. I'll, I'll go see what's what's occurring down there. And uh, Colonel, would you come with me, please? Uh, he'll him and a ha a little bit about. <laughs> oh no! Hold uh, on. Sorry, you're holding the you're holding the. Girl, yes, right? you. Yeah. 
Alexander has the young girl. Um, okay. Um, we're I... safe. Sorry? Um, uh, we're, sa- <laughs> we're safe. I guess I could... <laughs> I'll try to hand her over to Anders uh, a little uncertainly. <laughs> yep. It would be more like a fireman situation. Okay. Yeah. Have? Anders definitely kind of like feels like, oh god, okay, I am a scholar. <laughs> like, <laughs> this sort of energy happening. Keep keep going. Um, we'll go down uh, and see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, are you going quietly or are you just kind of walking down the stairs? What is your... I think, I'm precise, I think we just walk down the stairs. I mean, you know, a priest, sure. a priest and a military officer walk into a bar. <laughs> yeah, I like it. A priest, a military officer, and a vason walk into a bar. It's totally great. As you down the stairs, you kind of it's it, it's where stairs open out a little bit, and you can kind of peer down a little bit uh, and see the open area of the dining space, and you see that. Everyone in the room is like slumped over on tables or is toppled out of their chairs, and they seem to be asleep. Yeah, God, Colonel, do you see what I see? I am. The the Colonel starts trembling again. (laughs) Um, what, what, What do you see? These people all appear to be passed out. I hope so. Um, do, do do they all have like a f- food or drink in front of them, or um, some people do, some people don't? You see that uh, Sami is kind of like slumped over the front of the bar. Um, you see that uh, Lisa has like slid out of her chair and is like in a heap on the ground. But all of them appear to be asleep. Um, and it doesn't appear that each of them has like a, a specific through line of what could trigger it. Do, do we know what caused the sound? Uh, as you look around, you do see that um, Sammy had apparently been carrying clean dishes and had, when he went down, dropped them. Um, I'll call up the stairs. Uh, it's a little strange, but I don't think anyone will notice us. You, you can come down. Anders will do his best to manage the stairs. Well, what if we could put the girl in her room and let her sleep in her own bed and... It makes more sense than this. Oh, there's some force at work here. We can't leave her here. She's obviously a conduit for this force or something of that nature. She, We can't just leave her here. Okay, well... Let's, whatever we do, let's just move. <laughs> I'll meet Anders halfway up the stairs and I'll... Unless you have a better idea, I suggest we head for the church. Is there any reason why we should stick around here? As you all make your way down the stairs and Herr Hewlin says this, you notice that the temperature in the room plummets. The light from the fireplace turns this eerie, glowing blue color, similar to what happened in the theater. The lights dim. You can barely see in here. You, as you're exhaling, you're seeing your own breath in front of you. You get the creeping feeling like you're being watched. I need everyone to make a fear test, please. Um, so I just have a question. Would um... Anders, at this point, have to do it if Anders is supernatural. I, th- I think I would. I think I think it's just Cato's call, really. Let's see how you roll. So for okay. fear, you roll your empathy or your logic. Yep. Uh, just that, and then you can add a dice for each friend that is in the room with you. And I think we need two successes, right, for this particular feature? You need one success. Well, I one loaded it up with four successes. Ooh. Is that yep. One. You all managed to pass, I think, knowing now that there are eerie goings-on happening here. 
It's strange. It's uncomfortable. You beeline it for the door, the front door there. As you do, you hear the <laughs> crunching sounds of, gla- of, uh, of china, of porcelain underfoot, and you see the hulking figure of Sami, like, fully erecting, standing there, as if he is kind of, like, held up by, like, a, like a, as if he's being by the middle of the spine suspended in the air. His eyes, as he, his head lulls and pops up, his eyes are just completely white. And you say, you hear him say, What have I done? My God. What have I done? What? Um, is he, does he, does he appear to be like himself or does he appear to be like, you know, his eyes are rolled back and he's like. He appears to be kind of, uh, He's standing there and he's moving, but his eyes are white. What have you done? My gods. I wasn't supposed to be like this. I wasn't supposed to be like this at all. And he looks down at his hands and you all look down at his hands and suddenly they're covered in blood. He's holding a straight razor in one hand, and you see him shake and drop it. Oh, God. Oh, no. And as you're listening to him, you're hearing two voices at once. One that sounds like Sami that you've heard, and one that sounds like another voice. Perhaps it seems to be an older, gruffer male voice that's this kind of split that's happening. I'll look at Anders. Any, any idea what what's happening with Sammy? Sounds like he's not the only one occupying his body. I will uh, draw my holy symbol. I'm not going to hold it up. I'm just going to keep it in hand. And I'm going to talk over my shoulder and I'm going to say to the colonel, try to get to the door slowly with the girl while I distract this thing. And then I'm going to move up to sort of towards Sammy and kind of stand in front of him and go, Sammy, it's Father Hewlin. I... I'm sure that you know that our Father, God, is always ready to forgive those who repent. If you would like, and I'll start... As I'm, as I'm thinking about what I'm doing, I'm going to put away my holy symbol and I'm going to start taking on my little, you know, little scarf that <laughs> I swear. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to put it. I'm going to go, if, if you would like, Sammy, I can, I can take your confession. I can hear you. I can listen to your sins. And, and if you're contrite, Sammy, and if you are... are... Well, you see him drop <clears throat> the straight razor and grasp you around the neck and pull your forehead to him. Oh. Who's Sammy? I can't be forgiven for this. Who are you? Oscar? Here. Pyre. Everyone can be forgiven, Pyre. God forgives anyone who is meaningful in their and in, in, in contrite in, in, in their in their confessions. And he grasps you around the lapels and pulls you close and goes, mm. this can't be forgiven. And he shoves you away from me mm. him and you catch the top of the table and you see him just start making his way up the stairs. Oh, get myself up. I, 
it's the old man. Well, I do not believe we can help him directly by facing him as he is. Where is he going? Is, we should follow him. Uh, I do not think that is wise. I love Penny just being like, ugh. <laughs> I think he's recreating the events of his crime. He can lead us directly to where he buried Oscar. When I was behind in the attic, I looked out the window and there is a chained door outside. Perhaps what we are looking for is in there. Lead him there. Go look first. Perhaps we will find the bones we are looking for. Whatever we do, we should go fast. Well, perhaps I'll, perhaps I should follow Iri. See where he leads us to, and a lot of you can go to the door outside, the chain door. Can't leave you by yourself. You two go. The. Uh... The officer and I, the colonel and I, will bring the girl to the church and investigate the door. Okay. Right. All right. Turn around and start heading upstairs. You see that Sami is kind of mesmerized and is taking the steps just very deliberately, one step at a time. You said, uh, sorry, it was Perculin and... Anders. Is it just you going? And Anders going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'll start with the two of you. Um, are you staying quiet? Are you just... How close are you following? I think we should stay back just a touch. Yeah. We'll hang back a bit and try to be quiet. As you're hanging back, uh, you see him just kind of drawn methodically stepping up the stairs and you see him arrive at Nora's door and he takes the key ring off of his hip and just without even looking pulls the correct key and inserts it into the lock and turns it he leaves the keys in there he grasps the door handle and turns and opens the door and goes inside did Pyre kill his wife then? Just, let's keep watching. I'll go up a little bit more and take a look inside the room. As you kind of creep back up the stairs, you see that Pyrie has gotten a chair and put it in the center of the room. And you see that he has a length of rope and he's lobbed it over the rafter and pulled it taut. And you see him just methodically nodding a loop. We stop him? What do we do, Pear? Well, we can't let him do this. He'll be damned for all eternity and I'll Russian, is he still? Did he still have the razor? He dropped it when he grabbed you. Uh, I'll, I'll rush in and try to pull him away from the the noose. Sure. Let us. Uh, let me have you then do a physique plus force roll, please. Oh, that, that would help. Me. I don't know if that does. Make sure. Sense. Sure. Yes. Um, Lisa, and how would the help action? Happen I will here? get two extra dice. Excellent. Physique. Extra dice. I had two sixes. Two sixes. Excellent. Uh, which would be enough for you to. Um, you're not a. You're not a physically imposing man, but you are pretty quick, as you loop your arms through his elbows and pull him taut in this like full Nelson and you say, no, 
You must understand. I must do this. You, you can't. You, you cannot do this. Sammy or Pyrie, whoever it is who's in here, you'll be condemning your soul to hell. The Lord. I don't care. I don't care anymore. There are other ways. You can seek forgiveness. You can make amends for your action. This is not the way. This way leads to damnation. As you hold him and he's kind of writhing and you've got him firmly in your grasp. Andres, what are you doing? I think he's he's watching closely. There's been a lot of information thrown his way. Um, he will um, he'll pick up the rope and um, just we can try to bind him and uh, either take him with us, but we can't just if we leave him, he won't survive. Uh, let's find something to tie him up with, perhaps. You have something to tie him up with. I've, I've got the rope. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Right. Let's let's do that. We'll perhaps with the coming of daylight, he'll regain his senses. Um, and you see, you feel him thrashing, and as he's thrashing, he's getting a little bit calmer about it. All right. Let's let's tie him to something solid. Um, We'll find a way to kind of tie him to something, either the, the bed post or something that's going to be. Sure. You lash him to the bed and he's kind of there and he goes, oh God. Yeah. And his head goes slack. Oh, I'm sorry, man. We'll, we'll be back in the morning to, to check on you. I'll... And his head pops up and you see his eyes have returned to that bright blue that you had seen earlier. And he goes, What's happened? What is this? Don't think you'd believe us if we told you. <sighs> for your own safety, we'll, we're going to leave you here for a little while. We have to go. We have to go see that our friends are okay. But here, and I'll, I'll grab a blanket off the the bed and I'll wrap him up in it. We'll be back shortly. This is for your own protection. We'll be back shortly. And as you wrap him in this blanket, you hear him cry out. <laughs> Oh, oh, my leg, my leg, what the fuck is going on? Ah, oh, fuck. Take a look at the leg. Yeah. Yeah, he's wearing full length pants. Doctor. <laughs> Everybody referring to doctor as if he's another doctor. <laughs> right, yes. Um, uh, he'll sort of just like palpate his legs and see where it hurts. <laughs> as you are kind of grasping like along up up his legs uh along the inside of his left thigh as soon as you touch there you hear him just shriek like just above the knee and down like kind of on past the knee onto the calf is where you start feeling where he's uh expressing this pain Oof, oh, okay okay um is there any like blood or anything I can yes see? there is blood starting to seep through his pants and he is screaming and writhing uh, I'll, I'll remove his pants and I'll sure. try to pull the belt out to use as a tourniquet if needs be, so I'll... And as you work these pants off, he's shrieking. They're kind of sticking with this blood as you're peeling it off of his legs. And you look, and as you look down, you see that being etched into his legs, you see the words Pyre the Traitor appearing scratched in blood along him. What are Penny and the officer doing? <laughs> I think we were taking Sophia over to the church and then headed toward the doors. Sure. You make your way out. The church is maybe a quarter of a mile away. It's not too terribly far. You are in the mud and the rain and you're moving as quickly as you may. Um, you get to the church and it's this kind of, it's this single kind of church house shape with this steep roof and this one single steeple with a cross at the top there and just these two big white double doors. Um, and as you get there and you begin to pull on them, you realize that they're locked. Do 
Do you know any way to get through a locked door? Um, the, the, uh, he's still breathing. Kensington still breathing very heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, let me see. Uh, he'll try to find a somewhat dry area to lay, um, put Sophia down. And I'm going to, I want to find, try to find something that, uh, to use as leverage. Sure. You, you are able to kind of lay her like, uh, up, uh, propped up against the church wall there. There's like a railing that she can kind of lean against. Um, let me have you may, uh, do you have anything on your person that you could use as leverage or do you, are you? Uh, it's very minimal that I have. I got a pistol, binoculars, uh, liquor and bandages. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Unless the bandages see. are stiff as hell. I don't know. Um, you're a, you're a creative guy. So I feel like, uh, you unfurl these bandages. They're pretty strong. You know, they're the military grade ones that you have. And you're like, I don't know if this is going to work. And you start wrapping it around one of the door handles mm. and you begin wrapping it around your wrist to just pull and see if you can yank the door um with that leverage i would say you can get an extra d6 but go ahead and give me a physique and force roll please Ooh, okay uh, that is one success one success is all you need as you wrench it up and you hear <laughs> as it opens out your yeah your, your wrist is a little <laughs> It smarts for sure. Um, and while you're doing all of this, you're you're having these momentary like blips and flashes. Um, you're a bit on edge as you've kind of wrenched this door open. You lean back and you're shaking your wrist out and you look up and you look out onto the, the small cemetery plot that's there and you could swear you saw something. You close your eyes and you shake your head again and you look out and there's nothing there. Uh, okay, uh, let's, let's get inside. Um, I very quickly and unceremoniously will pick up Sophia, and as soon as I step inside, I will toss her onto a, a pew, and, um, I'm just gonna fall to my knees and, uh, leaning back and breathing heavy and, and <sighs> trying to get control of myself. Penny, what are you doing? I, seeing this, will go over and uh, kneel in front of Alexander and take his head in my hands and deep breaths. Are you all right? I, oh my God. Father Paris, I thought he was the coward. I had an idea of what what we were going to find if we followed Sammy and I couldn't, I couldn't go with him. It's too much. <laughs> and as you move your hands from your eyes and look at Penny, you see sitting in the church pews, all heads snap towards you of these figures of these soldiers that you once knew, their skin rotting, pockmarked, their eyes falling out of their head, milky white, their jaws dangling on, on one side. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna start falling backward and, and but scooching my way out of the, out of the church and, and uh, uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna start running. And as, as soon as you get all the way out of the church, you glance back you're not entirely convinced that they're gone, but you don't see anybody but Penny in there now. Uh, I am gonna fall against the, the, I guess the doors are still like wide open and I'm gonna yes. fall against the frame and, and, and to crumple into a ball. Um, and I'm, I think just racked with heavy breathing and sobs and uh, uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm at. <laughs> We've been friends for a long time, so I know that he keeps liquor on his person, so I'm going to pull it out and just make him drink all of it. I hope it will happen. <laughs> yeah. um, 
I think it, it, it takes uh, less time than you would think, and I'll come together and... Uh... <sighs> okay, thank you. And as you're kind of plying him with this liquor and he's kind of finally calming down, we're seeing, go with me on this, you were seeing the camera angle of the over the shoulder from Penny's perspective and the camera swings around and we see Penny and perched on her shoulder, all claws digging into it. You see this little, there's a, a creature only that Penny can see, the weight falling on your shoulder once again, you know it's back. And you hear it just whispering in your ear, it's a jumpy one, isn't it? Bad to have jumpy friends in danger time. <laughs> Better jumpy friends than none at all. You say that out loud, or do you say that like... I say it out loud. I think there is a, a look of panic and then like a relief. <laughs> Uh, I think I think uh, Kensington felt really seen uh, and really appreciated Penny <laughs> for that. She's a real one. What is going to help you most? I am going to investigate those doors. I, it seems unwise for you to stay here. Would you like to come with me or go back to our friends? Uh, and he'll kind of straighten up, stealing his whole self. And I'll go with you. It won't. It won't happen again. Even if it does, I'm with you. And we will go back into the rain in search of these doors. And as you do, you turn. You have kind of uh, taken a moment to almost swaddle Sophia so that she can be at least comfortable in this rest. Um, and you've closed the doors. Uh, Officer Kensington would have thought probably to wrap some of the bandages around so that at least it doesn't blow open while she's in there. Um, and as you kind of stumble and step out into the rain, uh, Kensington, a little bit um, losing some of your faculties from the spirits and Penny, you kind of have a shoulder, or, or an arm around his shoulder. Um, at one point while stepping in the mud, you, you step and you slip and you lose your footing. You know, you're you're a middle-aged woman. Um, you're, not, you're not the strongest person, but you do seem to go down pretty hard despite the mud. Penny, Penny, are you? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to weak, weakly try to pull you back up. Must have found a hole there. Uh, oof, I'm not as spry as I once was. None of us are, huh? You notice she looks quite pale. Are you, are you sure you're all right? I'm fine to keep going. Did you uh, lose some blood earlier? That is a, an astute remark. That's the highest honor I could have from Miss Hemsk. Let's get to this door. And as you do, you've helped her up. You know, you're kind of both stumbling through the rain and squelching through the mud as we see our our two heroes panning this way and the camera swings around and we see the church looming in the distance and we see the cemetery off to the side and in front of each of the headstones you see a soldier staring and swaying. Coming back to our doctor and our priest, you all have seen what is written on Sami's leg, Pyrie the traitor. What do you do? Is it still being carved? It is all written out now. And Doctor, do you, do you have something for the pain that we could give him? Uh, he'll reach in if he has a flask. Everyone has a flask, let's be real. Um, and he'll hand it over. Um, he'll also take off. Um, he's got like a 
an under vest. Um, so he'll start disrobing and, and take that and um, try to, to use it to at least cover the wound. Um, yeah. You you kind of stretch it out across and you hear him like, ah, ah, ah. I know, I know, I know. It's not a, it's not a carving. It, it's quite deep and you are occasionally seeing, like there are parts that are deeper and you're just seeing the blood kind of pooling up and spilling over a little yeah. bit. Just try to make it tight. Just, ah, fuck. Oh. Hey, ha- have a drink, Sammy, have a drink. Ah. And he's still lashed to the bed and he goes, then help me, father. Give me a drink, would ya? I do, I, I bring the flask up to his mouth. And you see him kind of, <coughs> what on earth is going on here, Sammy? Why, what did no. your father do? My father? No, Poe is my grandfather. Your grandfather? Sorry, I probably knew that, I just... What did Pyre do? I don't fucking know now, do I? Why would someone call him a traitor? Traitor? If anything, he'd probably save the family. <coughs> Fuck. God, that's strong stuff. You keep that on your person. Fuck, you'd ignite in flames if someone held a torch too close to you. Would you like another draft? Like, yes. God, him. yes. I give him another shot. And he takes it just greedily and he goes, oh, fuck. Where's your father buried? Where's your grandfather buried, Sammy? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. I, I, I committed a, I've committed a crime, man. But I can't. I can't remember what it is. You seem kind of staring into the into the middle distance. And his eyes are still that same kind of icy blue that you remember. Tammy, did you commit a crime, or are you perhaps experiencing the memories of somebody else? A dream, perhaps. I don't. I don't remember. You see him just slump as he passes out. Oh, shit. I will let him sleep it off. I suppose. Um, what now? Do we go find our friends? Do we need to... How do we f- find the grave? I don't know. But let's go find the others. This is not a place to be tripsing around alone. Um, I, I'll... Um, Kato, I would like to, one, make sure that he's okay and he's not in any Im- imminent danger. Yeah. You you lean in uh, and check his pulse, and you, you having seen uh, the officer do the same thing, you check his eyes to see if there's pupillary reaction, and um, he appears to be in a deep, deep sleep. I want to, as we head out, and if something happens, that's fine. But as we head out, what I would like to do is try to find a lantern, maybe, or some candles or something, um, sure. and pick up the straight razor that he dropped. Sure. You, um, uh, Anders, is there anything that you'd like to do before leaving the room on this? Um, he'll take another glance around, and as he looks at, uh, Sami sitting there, he's reminded of, um, what it feels like to have a a voice in your head, or maybe one at your ear, and, uh, shudders just a bit before turning to follow pair. As you do, you hear, and you can't tell if it's nerves or uh, what it might be, but you feel just a faint like tickle at your neck. And as you go to brush it away, you, you swipe your own ear. You pause for a second. In the normally rounded arc of the ear there, you, you run your finger along it and it comes to a sharp point for you whip your hand away and then clap it back and it's back to normal. Right, not now. And uh, he'll continue. When I hear him come now, I'll be like, wait, Anders, check Sammy for keys. 
Sure. We'll run back up and find the pants that were taken off of him, I guess. Yeah. We'll do that. You find the key ring pretty... Oh, no, the keys are in the door. Oh, that's right. Chekhov's keys. Chekhov's <laughs> keys. Totally the storyteller remembered this. You would pull the key from the door. Do you, do you lock him in there? Do you close the door? Do you leave it open? What are you, what are you thinking? I definitely close the door. Um, just stand for a moment. We, did we leave him tied up? Yeah, he's tied to the bedpost. And okay. we with garroted. no pants on. Yeah, but we garroted his leg with the belt, right? Do you put a tourniquet on his leg? You don't want to garrot a leg. That would be bad. Okay. Because um, that would be cutting. He'll, he'll stand for a second, and then he'll lock the door and head down. You turn and lock the door, and you head down the steps. And as you do, you see Perhul in there. Uh, he's bent down, and he's picked up the straight razor. There's no blood on it at this moment, but you do see it. It's pretty, it's very sharp. It's his, clearly his shaving razor and you fold it closed. Um, you dip behind the bar. You do find a, 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 a base lantern with some oil in there. Um, yeah. And as you do, uh, you kind of come around the side of the bar. So, you know, the stairs come down at an angle here and basically the bar is right there. Uh, you see Dr. Falk around the corner. And as you do, you pause. What do you say? Are you the right-handers? Uh, yes, I've, I've got the keys. I locked him in there. I, I figured it was safer if nobody could get to him. He certainly can't get out. Good. Onward, then? It's kind of eyeing you a little bit. Do you Just, think there's... Any truth to what the creature said in the room about all of us? I'm not sure about everyone, but there's an element of truth to what he said about me. I, I don't think it's what you're thinking, though. And what of you? I think the creature used things that were very easily observable about us to concoct lies that in our heightened state of paranoia and fear we would latch onto and perhaps find more truthful than they really were. It's as easy to accuse a priest of knowing the secrets of Parish. That is quite literally my role, is to Conf hear confession from everyone in the parish, and so, of course, as far as the other situation in mention, there was some years ago an exorcism I took part in. It. Well, we are but men, and though we carry with us the word of God, we are not God, and so when faced with the devil, we are wholly under-equipped. Things don't always go the wish the way you wish they would, but when the devil has his hand in the mix, things seldom go the way they should. And so, I'm reminded of a soothsayer I met in Karlsruhe some years ago. The man was dressed up like a gypsy traveler of old, perhaps, and sitting in a little alley behind a market street, and he had these cards, these tarot cards on his table, and he would do readings for people. And After observing him for some while, I came to the conclusion that while he did do some reading, it wasn't so much of the cards or the stars or the flight of birds or the omens. It was of the people who came to him. I think perhaps our friend 
whatever this demon is. I was simply trying to get us to turn on each other. And so I think that's the last thing we should. Certainly can't judge you for what you've done in your life. Um, suppose, if, if we're being honest with each other, um, there was some truth to the uh, comment about Faye. Um, I was kidnapped as a as a boy, and um, ever since I um, have had. I've been sort of followed um, through my life by a fairy, a fae, I, I don't really know, but I've done things at his behest, and they're things that I deeply regret. What kind of things? Very, very bad things to people that I love very much. And you judge yourself for this? Of course I do. That is your mistake, Anders. There is only one who may judge us, and he is all forgiving. I suppose. Um, well. That's great. I feel lighter. Whatever. There's much to do. We, we need to keep moving. You step back from each other and you turn around. Did it get colder in here? God, it's unbearable. And you head towards the door. And as soon as you get about halfway across the room, you hear like the, you hear the, the shuffling of feet and you hear this scraping of wood on wood and you see you hear you hear a <coughs> and you hear a <coughs> and you hear a <laughs> and as you turn back around you see that every person that had fallen asleep in this room is standing swaying there heads lolling eyes white you see Olaus Clint you see Lisa the young woman you see Father Clarid all standing there, kind of just swaying gently. And you hear them mumbling and muttering under their breath, indiscernible. And they step as if they are walking through water towards you. And that, my friends, is where we are going to take our break. Hey, everybody. We have returned. We have returned from our little trip to the mythic bathroom. Our mythic kitchen. Where, wherever you guys ended up going. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <clears throat> the Hello, mythic everyone. shed. Uh, please take it away, uh, Dr. Kato. My friends, when we last left off... Our dear Penny Hemsk and Officer Alexander Kensington had just dropped the 16-year-old Sophia off at the church nearby so that she could be kept safe and away from the Witch Cat Inn, wherein some strange goings-on started going on. They were making their way back through the mud, uh, Officer Kensington shaken by seeing the ghostly visages of the troop of soldiers that he once commanded, that he had watched die and then arise on the battlefield, seemingly haunting his peripheral vision. And our own Penny Hems, having tripped and stumbled hard in the mud, uh, I guess she's not feeling very well. Uh, she's looking a little pale, don't you think? Hmm. Odd to hear her having these conversations that seemingly are one-sided. While also... Dr. Falk and Per Hulen 
at the witch cat had waylaid Sami, the innkeep, and prevented him from possible tragedy, wherein they lashed him to the bed, and he didn't recall his actions. However, he did recall that he committed a crime, but he wasn't sure what, and that he knew he was guilty. When suddenly emerging in carved into his leg, the blood pooling, the words Pyrie the traitor were written down his leg before he slumped into a deep slumber. Dr. Falk had locked the door to the room behind and they were having a conversation in the dining room about the specific things that the Revenant had said to them in the attic space. And as they headed towards the door, they noticed that the uh, patrons of the Witch Cat Inn arising from their slumber, seemingly sleepwalking, twitching, jumping, laughing, mumbling in their sleep, had started swaying in place. And as they did, you see them fall into formation as they almost waltz around the room, blocking you from coming or going. You hear them muttering under their breaths, Katya, Albert, Hilma, Pyri, rhythmically chanting. I need both of you to make a fear test, please. I don't like this. Uh, so we get one extra die each because we're with a friend. Uh, because you're what? Because we're with a friend. Yes. Thank you for remembering that because that is a rule I would absolutely forget. Hold on. Although, are we still friends? I don't know. Lovers, lovers, and friends. Or lovers. Friends can, friends can be lovers. Yeah. Loving really? your loving your friends is good. Loving your friends is good. Tell your homies you love. I them. got two successes. I got none. I'm gonna. You gonna push? I don't think you can push fear roll. I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. I am going to check. Wait, I actually might know the answer to that. Hold, please. Fear, um, logic, I... empathy, fear. We'll do 1d6 number of rounds at one dice per friendly. Doesn't say you can't. Um, It doesn't say... Uh, on failure, you can push the rule by acquiring a mental condition. So yes, you can push. Well, give me the mental condition. Give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. Well, that was worth it. At least I got a six, so. Excellent. I got one, though, not two, so I don't know if we needed two or one. Uh, you needed one, so well done. But you are acquiring the yeah. condition. What I think condition I will take... I think he's going to take angry, because I think he's getting a little frustrated with kind of all the weirdness and you know all that and plus what the the revenants spilling all the you know the good stuff earlier and all that so i think he's getting a little a little kind of angry sure as you're seeing damn these... it doctor okay. D- damn it doctor i'm a priest not a doc wait 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 Good. as you see them uh swirling and dancing and swaying and this this bordering on beautiful if it wasn't so grotesque waltz you see as it it appears as they as if they are being puppeted their limbs are flopping their heads are lolling as they are repeating these names over and over albert katya hilma pyri over and over and suddenly they stop, their heads slack, standing in a circle around you, facing you. I don't know about you, Doctor, but I've had just about enough of these goings on. Degree more. Me too. I am going to reach behind me. I'm going to take Andrew's hand. 
And I will say, we walk the path of the righteous. And as I start walking, and not menacingly or anything, I'm going to start working towards the door. I know they're between us. I'm just going to pull Anders behind me and start walking. And as I do, I will start intoning a prayer. Here do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil. You're walking towards the door? Yeah, I'm trying to kind of squeeze in between some of them. As soon as you do, uh, Lisa and Father Clarid lock and block your path. What do you want, spirits? They say nothing. Their head's still down. Katya, Irie, Ilma, Albert. Which one are you? Oscar? Their heads snap up. They don't respond. You see these milky white eyes. Anders, is there anything in that little saucer full of secret brain of yours about this kind of behavior from people under the effects of Mason? Oh, is there anything in my head about stuff like this? Let's have you roll for it. Oh, 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 oh. Um, let me have you do logic and learning, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use another tooth. Tooth. Remember, friends, you can with your bits give our players troll toofs, which will grant them an extra two dice to their rolls. Is that correct, Bleak Season? That is absolutely correct. I got one success. Excellent. These are not Vessen, but they are under the control of a Vessen. So they stand there swaying slightly, their eyes white, fixed on you. They still are themselves, yet not. They have no control over their physical actions whatsoever. So Puppets, then. You like it. Oscar. We're here to help you. Tell us how we may help you. We wish to lay you to rest. We wish to take that burden from upon your brow and lay it at God's feet that you may be forgiven and that you may find eternal rest we will ensure that you are properly buried but in order to do so we must be allowed to leave we're here to help you Oscar you hear a from behind you feel something slowly approaching your ear. You hear the grinding of teeth on bone. I don't think so. You remind me of someone. Just like Albert. It withdraws. And as this happens, Father Clarid rears back and throws a punch right in your face. But Father, <laughs> um, I think I'm way too surprised to do anything, so I'm just gonna take it. You take it right on the chin, you topple backwards. As soon as this happens, Lisa leaps on top of you and goes for your throat, Anders, and collapses you down to the ground. <laughs> While you are in the midst of this fray, we cut back to Penny and Officer Kensington, making their way through the mud and the rain. It's cold, it's wet. You're slightly drunk from the spirits that had been poured down your throat. Your mind is elsewhere, of all things, thinking about your book. As you arrive again at the witch cat, 
these faint blue flames glowing in the window, looking like a ghost for all its ghastly, run-down, bedraggled appearance. It looms in front of you. What do you do? Do we check on our friends or go around back? That's a really good question. <laughs> Let's go around back. We haven't been gone long. You hear the sound of a fray, of a scuffle starting to ensue in the dining room. Mm, maybe that's our cue? I am not going to railroad you on this. You have two options. <laughs> that is by all means your choice. I feel the time is of the essence, and I would like to know what is behind the doors. We can take a peek and then head back inside if we need help. Okay. Let's go. Quickly, then. You approach the front of the house and veer left around it. Penny, you recall exactly where the double doors had been pointed to by the clawed hand of the creature that exists only in your mind and heart. You find the doors at an angle on the ground, aiming downward with a large iron chain padlocked around it. Mm. This seems perhaps more difficult to force than the doors of the church? Uh, yes. Probably. Uh, I've heard of this. I read this in a book, and I'm going to take out my pistol and shoot at the <laughs> fucking chain. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, my gosh. Um, Maybe I read this in one of your books. You know, I have used it as a... a, a way to get people into places that they weren't supposed to go so uh, perhaps it will it will work in real life i'm gonna have you roll a ranged combat plus your precision please okay oh that was a whiff <laughs> <laughs> of course not. You push, would you like to push you the can roll? Push. Oh yeah, I can push it. Um, you, you would take a you would take a condition if you push. Wait, would it be a physical or a mental condition? Yeah, I'll absolutely push it. But which one? I I would say it has to be it has to be of the same type of to, skill you're using. So if you're so using it would be it, a physical. Yeah. So you would likely I will I would let you choose amongst those. Obviously not broken because. That's yeah, not yet. That's if things get real bad. Yeah, like and in fifteen we minutes. Reroll everything that wasn't a success. Correct. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be. Do you have any tooths left? Can you apply the tooths in this? Can I sense? help and describe the research I had done about <laughs> shooting locks? <laughs> <laughs> As the shot goes wild, and you go no, like this, angle downward. Uh, I do have one tooth, so I will use that. And let's go. Let's see. It's a lot more dice, so... Uh, that is another whiff. Uh... Oh, no. I don't know how to open this. You don't, and now you're going to take a, uh, a physical condition. Yeah. I'm... You can choose amongst those. I think I'm exhausted. I'll take that. Yeah, I would imagine so. What do you all do now? Perhaps we need to go find a key. Will it be that simple? It never is. Let's, uh, let's go back. Intruder. <laughs> <laughs> um, unless you, you can think of another way in. Can I make an inspiration roll to 
come up with a inventive way inside. Sure. Absolutely. So empathy plus inspiration. Yeah. Let's let's play. One success. One success. You are perhaps not the most au courant person, but you do have two long hairpins that pin your hair back. I will reach up and pull them out. And uh, I've always wanted to try this and never had the right opportunity. And so I will start fiddling around with my hairpins. Which I believe is precision, precision, you're drunk. Precision and stealth. Is that correct for a while? That's right. Okay. Great. Um, I'm going to use two toofs for this because my precision isn't great. Okay, that's four extra d6 for you. One success. One's all you needed. As you <laughs> turn excitedly to Officer Kensington and express how you've always wanted to do this, you f- place the pin in, and you've s- you've studied enough things. You've watched certain people doing the same thing, and you you spin it just so, and you hear the tumbler click, and the lock <laughs> opens. Huh? I think I think we've. I had some success. That's, impre- that's impressive. I do a lot of research for my books, and uh, I'm glad to see it finally paying off. I love for all the help. And- Pull off the lock, you remove the chains, and you grab both doors by the handles, and you throw it open, and you are hit with the musty smell of earth and uh, uh, damp wood and root vegetables and earthworms as you open up the root cellar. You peer down, it's impossibly dark. You see that there is, uh, you can see visually at least one wooden step with no railing along the side there, but otherwise you can't see down into it. It is. I f- will feel around the walls on the inside to feel if there's like, and, and some manner of torture, something. Let's see here. Let's see if you have anything on you. Binoculars that can get really close to the dead. <laughs> Opera glasses. What would you like to do? We need a lantern. Yes, you do. Let's go back. All right. Sorry to disappoint. I was hoping to make a discovery, claim it for my own, but I suppose that our friends can come along too. grandiose and I, I like it. <laughs> Do you go back around the front? You make your way around the front. From the inside, you are hearing the sounds of a scuffle. You're hearing uh, Perhulan, uh kind of moaning in pain, and you're hearing uh, what sounds like Anders perhaps choking on a chicken bone inside. Who knows what they're doing? Uh, I'll keep my pistol drawn. I teed that up for you and I'm mad about it. (laughs) Uh, The door does not budge when you attempt to open it. A window? Window doesn't seem to move either. 
Uh, I will try to use the butt of my gun to break the window. Sure. Go ahead and roll me uh, physique plus force, please. Physique plus force minus a one. Uh, correct. Yes. Uh, also, uh, in case you didn't see it in chat, you did get a hail from bleak season. I will. Also, use... Dev got one as well. Um, okay, that is one. One success is all you need. As you uh, grasp at this this fine pistol that you had, military issue, it's heavy butt of the gun, you break the window and you crack it just so that the whole thing splinters and it's wide enough for you to get through as you kind of crouch and climb in and you help Penny inside. The scene before you is frightening. I need both of you to make fear rolls. Okay, oh shit, okay. Get that uh, three extra dice since we're all in the room to get over. It's your logic or uh, I think plus three extra dice. Devil's luck. <laughs> Woo! Six, 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 hail Satan. I said to Deb. <laughs> <laughs> I got two. Two successes. Excellent. Uh, you, you've all seen enough ghosts and ghouls today that this is this is child's play. Um, Penny, in particular, walks over and grabs Lisa by the scruff and yanks her off. She's she's this long, sinewy young woman who just kind of flails around as Penny is just kind of hocked her off of Anders. Um, you see that uh, Father Clarid at this point has stepped over to Per Hulin and is stepping on his neck. You're all in the midst of a fray. And I believe we're going to go for an initiative on mm. this. No. Yeah. Okay, so initiative in Vesson uh, works like many free league games where I'm going to draw your initiative cards. It's one through ten, one being uh, the first, ten being the last. I believe you can swap initiatives. Yeah, is that you can uh, trade initiatives with someone who hasn't gone yet. Okay. Uh, Sinue, like Verena? Wink. Um... And we're going to see if I know how to um, do anything uh, regarding combat with Vesson. So, <laughs> uh, okay, first up, a card for Bleak Season. Uh, Bleak is at three. Beth, you are at six. Deb, you are at five. And Kay, you are at one. My suggestion is um, pick a die and with your number and put it in front of you so that... That is very helpful for me, too. I'm also going to write your name on post-it notes. Post-its. With my Sin City playing cards. So in Vesin, you get uh, a slow action and a fast action, as well as your movement. You want me to uh, find a suitable bar map, or want to just... Uh, do we not have the first floor of the bar? Oh, that's lovely, big season. Look at that. Isn't it? But um, I think there may have been uh, some miscommunication because I think I have a first floor of a house. Oh, I thought, hmm, maybe hold I on. told me... you wrong. No, but hold on. Hold on. While you're doing that, I'm doing this. Yeah, I have a cottage and not a bar, but I, I can find you a bar, like, if you give me two seconds, I'll find it. I mean, that's pretty comparable to what we are dealing with, but if you want to find a, a bar space, because it'll make you happy, then let's do it. It'll make me happy. Give me one second. Okay, then let's do it. No do worries. It. Thank you all for your patience. The horror drain. <laughs> How's everybody Could doing tonight? In a Doing cellar good. right now, if I had taken a fucking lantern. Let's see here. And they are all going to go on initiative two. You got to take up smoking, carry a lighter. I did think that. I was like, oh, Penny would be a smoker. <laughs> Does anyone want to swap initiatives before we get going? We've got K first. The Sleepwalkers, Bleak Season, Deb, and then Beth. Uh, 
Um, you don't have to. You do not have to be altruistic in any capacity if you don't want to. Does anyone want to go first? Um, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to do anything different whether I go first <laughs> or last, so... You go first. You go first. Okay. Yeah. You got uh, this. You got this. I think I am going to football tackle this old man. <laughs> go for it. Um, go for just theater you... of the minded while I sort the thing. Yes, thank you, Blake Season, for your excellent producing. We, we got some teefs. Teefs? You got some teefs? We got some teefs. Thank oh, you. Goodness. Thank you, King Bashman. I'm going to use it immediately. Yes, all the toofses. There's a cat now right in front of me, so I have to... Uh, two. Two. Two successes. As you hold, hold, please, hold, please. All of my notes are a jumble. Do, do, do. Bleak season, can I ask a rules question for yep, you? Yeah, go for it. Uh, if something is listed as having a physique three, do I get to roll three dice? Or is that how many successes you have to have in order to beat me? No, have if your eight. physique is three, that's the number of dice that you have. Okay, okay, okay. Then I get to roll three dice. <laughs> I get to roll two in this game. Ooh, only one success on that as you... Uh, bear down and just like shoulder right into the gut of Father Clarid and he goes flying back and he lands hard on the floor. Uh, that would be considered your fat is that would that be considered a fast action or a slow action? Like that's a slow action. Yeah. Yes. So you would still have a fast action or it's one slow action or two fast actions. So I think it's a, generally a slow action and a fast action or two fast actions. Yeah. And Correct. then I Can have I something myself. that gives me, a, I'm defensive. So each turn I get one extra action that may only be used to dodge or parry. So I basically get to do some two things. How many, uh, uh, how many enemies would you like, uh, Kato? Uh, we will have um, Father Clarid and Lisa, who have been blocking your way, uh, as well as the cook at this point. There should be three. I didn't stipulate to you, I'm sorry. Okay. Also, that is real far off my screen. If I do this, does this fuck your shit up, or does this visually help me? Oh, I won't. There we go. I don't know where you want to yeah. happen, but... So, <clears throat> front door for reference, friendos, is here. That's front door. So, you all then, uh, Herr Hulen, where are you? Herr, which one are you? Is this Herr Hulen? Uh, Herr Hulen is right here. So, Herr Hulen would have been here. With Father Thank you, Clarid for now. The, uh, oops. Yes, with Father Clarid here. Thank you. Thank you so much. With the officer here. Um, Penny has had wrenched Lisa over this way. Anders is on the ground, and the cook is here. All right. That will bring us to. The sleepwalkers. First up, Father Clarid is going to stand and having been knocked over and is kind of toppled by, uh, by Officer Kensington, is going to attempt to wrench you off and keep hold of your scruff. So that would be a physique three roll. Not my scruff. No successes on that one as he... <laughs> attempts to roll you off the cook seeing penny throwing anders or throwing throwing anders my bad uh throwing uh lisa she is going to counter this way 
and grab Anders by the scruff there. And she picks him up and drags him, starts moving this way with him up the stairs. They're literally bullying you. They're like... <laughs> yep. Uh, while Lisa is going to attempt to tackle you, Penny, so I believe that would be a contested roll. So it's going to be your uh, physique versus mine. Yeah, physique plus uh, close combat, probably. I'm going to use a tooth. And probably, yeah. Remember, someone has a physical condition, right? If you have a physical condition, you have to reduce your pools in physique and precision by one die. I got two successes. Two successes against her one. She's she's so thin and gangling that you just like deflect her and throw her onto a table, which will take us over to Blee. Is there anyone that has not acted yet in our group? Uh, Deb and Beth, uh, so Anders and Penny have not, they've countered or, or been attacked, but they've not. I will rush up here. Um, and I will actually, let me do this. Let me do it this way. I am going to, before I go. I am going to look at the good, um, good Colonel, and I will say, Colonel, fight with righteousness in your heart, and God, God will see you right. And I will give him a pat on the shoulder, and I will give him my blessing, so you get a plus two advantage on your next test. That'll be my slow action and my fast action. I will move up here and yell, Anders, I'm coming! And I will kind of run up here and kind of get involved here. I can't do anything else, but I'll just kind of go run up there and sort of get involved. Sure. That would then bring us to Penny. Um, would these be like, would there be like lanterns on the wall or torches? What would they be? Uh, yes. Yeah, so there would be like, you can see actually there, there would be these kind of iron lanterns. Also when, um, when, uh, Perculin got clocked. He dropped the lantern that he had, which is going to be like right over here-ish. Um, I will pick. Mm. Are the ones on the wall removable, or are they sort of like soldered to the wall? Yeah, no, they're just on hooks. Okay, I'm gonna go uh, over here and grab this lantern off the wall and <laughs> smash Lisa with it. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Uh, to, uh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with physique and close combat on that. You're a lover, not a fighter. I did not succeed. Um, but neither did she. Say that again? Neither did she in terms of resisting. Neither one got successes, so um, in that particular case, I would go with the idea that the attacker did not get a success and leave mm -hmm. it at that. Sure. So the attacker missed. Yes, as you you manage to like catch her right on the arm, but she kind of blocks it. It's just this kind of messy looking scuffle. Uh, that would count as your slow action, so you could have a fast action as well. Um. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I think I am going to, I've got a, like a, a letter opener and I think I'm just going to pull it out and brandish it. Okay. You ready to it? Yep. Excellent. Beth, it's Anders' turn. Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> Um, getting weird. Um, I am going to um, look at this mofo in front of me and um, 
I'm going to, uh, you'll see his eyes sort of um, glaze over a bit. And um, I don't think anyone would see, but his ears point again, just a touch. And um, he, I'm gonna use my strike fear ability. Um, so it's a slow action. Um, and they have to pass a logic or empathy test. And I suppose they gain dice equal to the number of friendly individuals in the same zone, so maybe the other two. Wait, you're muted, you're muted. Stars and garters. Um, what color did your eyes change in this process? Um, they sort of uh, flashed white, um, but like an opalescent sort of white, and it was it was quick. But they're back to the way that they normally look. And your ears like got exceedingly long and pointed along the side of your head, as you see this this creature that is uh, kind of standing there swaying. It pauses for a second. Not quite afraid, but it pauses, recognizing something different from what it expected. It still has you by the collar, but it's loosened its grip just slightly. That would count as your slow action for strike fear. Yeah, so I'm going to, I'm gonna try to break free then. Um, You've already used your slow action. You, yeah, so you wouldn't be able to. You oh. have an option to. You get a slow action and a fast a action. Reaction. Sorry, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I will. Um, yeah, I'll just. I'll. I'll reach uh, into my pocket and and pull out. Um, I've just got a like a pocket knife. It's not much of anything, but I'll I'll pull it out and brandish it. Sure. Back at the top of the turn order with Kay. Okay. Um, so the, is the old, older father, uh, standing, he stands up now, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to, I think I'm gonna try to, (sighs) these people don't know what they're doing. I think I was just going to try to push him over and pin him with something. Sure, go for it. That's minus one. Uh, if my pistol has a plus two, that would be to ranged attacks. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And you have a plus two because of the blessing I gave you, if you want to use it. Oh, I think I used it earlier, sure. unfortunately. Oh, I got a one. A one, which is what you needed. So you pin, you're pinning him to the table? Uh, maybe pinning him under the table. Pinning him under the table. So you're kind of like trapping. Are you standing and like, tell me how you're doing this. Also, hey, bits from Andrew, you all get a troll tooth. A troll tooth. I got a troll tooth. Thanks for the tooth. Um, so I push him down ne- near next to the table. I then flip the table over and I like am pushing it down on him and like standing on it. You're As you're standing oh. on it, you're hearing oh. as you have it pinned underneath the table. Uh, that would count as your slow action. Do you have a fast action you'd like to do as well? Um, I don't think I have one other than I'll like, I think parry? Do I have to announce you have to be... or something? So the, the way okay. you would use parry is that you could trade off your um, your action in this round oh. to uh, be able to, uh, you can say, if you don't move, you can save your fast action to attempt to dodge or parry later in the round. Um, I think I will use my fast action instead to uh, yell at Penny to get out of here. Right. 
Uh, that wouldn't take a fast action just to yell something. No, no. Free action. Yeah. Well then, I don't have nothing. I'm just coming <laughs> to this guy under this table. So then save your fast action in case you need to dodge or... Sure. Yeah. That will then... Uh, yes, crying is a free action. That will then bring us to the sleepwalkers. Oh, I am opening the wrong tab. Here we go. Um, the one that had been frightened by you, Anders, slackens his grip on you and reaches out and snatches the father around the neck and has him in a tight hold and starts dragging him up the stairs. As he's moving upward here, Lisa turns and moves towards Penny, attempting to block her from exiting. And she attempts to grab you by the arm and drag you up the stairs. So I need you to go ahead and roll a, uh, a physique plus close combat. I will use another tooth. Um, this so, also should have been a roll for Perry. Go ahead. I, I was just I was just going to say that the roll would be if she had a fast action, she would be attempting to dodge uh, sure. or, or parry this, right? So it's not quite an opposed roll. You still have to get more success than him. So, but if you're attempting to parry, uh, you would roll your um, close combat. Yes. That's what I had said. So it's up to you if you want to parry or if you let her, essentially, if you acquiesce to the attack. Is that correct? Yeah. So if you don't do so, that, basically every success you get in that takes away a success from the enemy. If you don't do that, the enemy just rolls. And if they get a success, they hit you. And that would have also applied for Perculin, correct? Yeah. OK, so then let's retcon and have you roll first then. No, that's if you fine. Want I'm, to okay with I'm, I'm OK with her grabbing me. Sure. Yeah. She's um, dragging up the stairs. Go ahead. I will uh, see if she hits me, I guess. She does. Do you parry? Yes. Go ahead and roll for it. I got one success. One success. As she had reached out and grabbed you by the wrist and she clamps down and you're feeling the supernatural strength that she digs her claws in. You're, you're feeling just a little bit of your very precious blood just collecting under her fingernails. You manage to wrench your elbow away as she just leaves these huge claw marks up your arm. Hey Raiders, welcome in. Thanks for being here. Hey Raiders, thank you so much for joining us. We are playing Vason. A little game of horror set in the mythical north. As you... Uh, well, we cut over to Father Clarid, who's being pinned down by Officer Kensington, who is flailing and attempting to break out of the of the table there. Um, they are going to make a physique roll. Are you attempting to like bear down on them? To K, Officer Kensington? Uh, what do you mean bear down on them? So are you, are you staying, are you attempting to kind of stay in place and like, and keep the table on top of him in this? Cause he's attempting to push you off. Yes, right now I am. Yeah. Okay. Then I think I would, with this, I would say probably physique plus force just because there is a table between you and technically it, I guess it could be considered close combat, but minus one. Okay. Remember you have the minus one. Yes. Oh, that is one. As you feel the the entity underneath you, is it kind of poof, poof, and you're seeing this like snarling face, these white milky eyes, the saliva pooling out of his mouth, and he's just kind of ah, 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 and he's attempting to shove the table off of him, but you hold in place. You fought you fought lesser creeps than this. Um, that will bring us to leak season. 
Um, I will reach into my pocket and pull out the straight razor that I found earlier on the bar, and I will cut my shirt where this person is holding me to try and, and rip myself free of them. So she's got you in a headlock. Oh, she's got me in a headlock. Yeah, huh? yeah. Hey, Raiders. Thanks um, for coming in. We are playing Vessen. I'm not much of a combat dude, so... Um, just seems like she's pulling me upstairs. Yep, she's dragging you up the stairs. I'm going to yell behind me, Anders, come along, and I will just start moving up and going upstairs with her. Ooh. All right. I want to see where this leads. Excellent. Deb, it's Penny's turn. Um, I will keep my action, my fast action to try and parry your dodge if ever. You bet. Hold on to that. Am I currently restrained? You are not. You okay. you shook it loose. Yes, you, you've got this kind of like scrape up your arm. I would like to flee and head toward the root cellar. Sure. You run out the door, throw it open, rush out into the rain, and you can get kind of down those porch steps and just slightly around the building in that time. Um, Lee, correct me if I'm wrong, is there an ability to dash? Yeah, you can take two further? fast actions. Uh, which will allow you to move two zones. So because it works in zones and not like uh, either whatever you get to decide kind of where she goes. And if she wants to spend her both fast actions to move, uh, you could have her go like all the way outside and then all the way into the next zone, which would be like into the the basement probably. You would you'd be able to get out the door and around, and you're seeing the basement just in view. So you'd just be at the at the beginning of your next turn. You'd just be at the top of the stairs there. Great. Excellent. Beth, Anders turn. Yeah, so um, having heard what uh, Father Pear said and and then seeing Penny bolt, I sort of just look between the two. Um, does uh, Lisa look like she's turned her attention? Is she still like paying attention to Penny? Penny was shockingly fast for her yeah. age and kind of barreled past uh, Lisa, and I think she was more startled. So you're catching her while she's kind of startled and seeing Penny run off. Hey. I... Okay, I'm, I'm going to reach into my breast pocket and take out my sweet little baby Echo my bat, Thank you. Thank you. and I will toss him up into the air and say, go help, and I'll have him fly towards uh, the mofo that's that's pulling Father Pear um, with the intent of having uh, it help as like a, a distraction of some kind, I don't know. Um, and then I'm going to um, move towards the uh, unsuspecting Lisa and see if I can stab her with the knife that I brought out. Uh, yeah, I would say your fast action could be spent to send Echo along and your your slow yeah. action would be to make an attack on her in that case. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm sorry, what do I need to roll for that against? Uh, you're going to roll your physique plus co close combat for that. Okay, I'm definitely going to use two of my toofs. A two for two? two Troll toofs. Troll toofs. Oh, thank God. I Even got one tooth. tooth. You got one tooth. For uh, people just joining us who came in with the raid, Basin is a game published by Free League Publishing, and it is a game that is set in uh, the 19th century, so the 1800s, in Scandinavia, and is concerned with a group of people or investigators called Thursday's Children, who are more part of a society, who have the ability to see creatures called Vaisen, who are uh, ancient folk spirits that are sometimes mischievous, sometimes downright evil, and sometimes just not that bad. Um, and who investigate uh, situations and occurrences of these basin um, messing around with, with uh, human people. And that is what we are doing right now as there is apparently some sort of weird dream manipulation thing going on in this a little town in Norway where we currently find ourselves. Yes. She attempted to resist you by using her 
action to do so and she failed. Where do you stick this knife? Um, her arms are sort of up. I'm just going to get her like in the ribs. Just like a solid wow. stab. Wow. Guys, don't make those faces at me. I feel guilty already. Wow. I would say make a either a, a logic and learning or an observation and empathy role. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Same deal. Okay. Um, two successes. Two successes. You, um, are you right or left-handed, Anders? Mm. Um, you know what? He's a lefty, let's say. You may not be a medical doctor, <laughs> but, but by God, you know exactly where to stick a knife so as not to hit anything very major. And you being a lefty facing this poor, sinewy looking woman, you aim and strike true just below her liver, just barely missing it as she doubles over in pain and you see the dark red blood starting to pool out over her skirt as she clings to her side. Her eye is still milky white. She turns and looks at you. You see a big glob of saliva dripping down and lands on the ground as she kind of gnashes her teeth in pain at you, still determined to drag you up the stairs. And that'll bring us over to Kay. Anders. Are you done? Oh my god. Uh... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I fuck. Is Pear still uh, going with the flow there? He is going up the stairs. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to do a little a little stomp on on the table, <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, move zones uh, and running after Pear. Um, Excellent. And I, if I can try to like grab a, a, a piece of um, Anders and the like, be like, let's let's freaking go. Do you resist Anders at all? Mr. are being kind of wrenched this way up the stairs. That's fine. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Kay, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Uh. I don't think so. I think that's good. We have a man crushed under a table. A lady just got stabbed. I think we're... <laughs> we're doing great. Yeah. We're doing great. Uh, the man crushed under the table is going to attempt to get it off of him. Fails in the process. The uh, the woman who got stabbed, Lisa, uh, had attempted to use her dodge action to... Um, to avoid getting attacked, so that would have counted as her slow action or her fast action. Sorry, say her that slow. again. Uh, and attempting a dodge counts as your slow action. So or fast, fast action. action. Fast action. Um, Anders, did you leave the knife in her? Or did you pull it out? <laughs> I pulled it out. <laughs> this gout of blood kind of spills onto the oh, floor. God. She's going to start hobbling slowly because she's got a ruined psoas muscle as she is going to attempt to just make her way towards you. Um, the cook, having Perhulin under her arm, wrenches him and drags him all the way to the top of the stairs and gets into Nora's room, hucks him across the floor, and you see her pulling a box of matches out of her pocket as she goes to pull one out and strike it you see the slumped figure of sami there lashed to the bed his leg bleeding onto the floor as you've gotten thrown just adjacent to him and you see the uh the cook pulling out a, a box of matches she strikes three of them in her hand and goes to throw it on the bed bleak season what are you doing Praying to God and all the holy fucking ghosts. Um, I will. She's letting me go, I assume. Yeah, she hucked you across the room. 
I will... Can I... Can I take a moment to try and discern? Is she trying... Do I get the feeling she's trying to kill Sammy? Or do I get the feeling she's just trying to burn the place down? Like... Uh, is there any way I could you, pick up something uh, about that? Yeah, what would you like to roll? Tell me what you would like to roll. What you think um, might be... I would like to... Roll... Uh, I will say that I would roll probably, uh, I think, uh, my observation, I guess. Sure, go for it. I see an observation. And one success. One success. Difficult to tell based on landing and being jostled and being deprived mm -hmm. of oxygen or to your brain for a little bit there. Um, you don't get the sense that she's trying to kill Sammy. She's looking to burn the whole damn place down. I will pull out the straight razor. Well, lash out and cut Sammy's ropes and grab him and start hauling him and yell for uh, Anders to come and help me. I would say that your slow the cutting would be the slow action. So I'm cutting would be the that. slow action. You all had lashed him with a thick rope, so it's not going to be a quick slash. It's going to be a sawing through them to get him undone. It would take you a minute to get it. Is there a window in this room? Mm hmm. Can I rush forward and tackle her through the window? Be my guest. She doesn't have a reaction to dodge it because she had already taken her action. All right. I will do that. Um, uh, so I guess there'll be a close combat, which I don't have a lot. So I got three physique. I got no close combat. I'll use a tooth. Using them tooths, so two extra dice on that roll. And no successes. I will push. As I strain myself. A success. One success? Yeah. She doesn't have an option mm. to parry it. As you just spear her across the waist, you catch her around the middle. Both of you crash through the glass and tumble ass over tea kettles to the earth. <coughs> I'll take the wounded. Yes, you will take the wounded. Absolutely, ah. you will. You'll take the. the is my feeling up. is that there's other people sleeping in this inn, and I'm like, we're not gonna set let her set this place on fire because there's a lot of people, like whatever, in my mind. Sure. Penny at the top of the stairs to the root cellar. It's your turn. Am I outside near the root cellar now? You are outside, like along the side of the house. Okay. She has already passed you at this point. I will descend into the root cellar. As you descend, you're hit with that earthen smell. It overwhelms your senses. You have this lit lantern in front of you. You're holding it aloft and you peer down and as you do, you're you're hearing the crunch of bugs under your feet. The root cellar is carpeted in vermin, in insects, in rats, in the skeletal remains of creatures that have long since decayed. They are just caking the floor in this room. It's freezing in here. You look around You see nothing really of note. You see these bookshelves covered 
or the, uh, the the shelves covered in in sacks of what look like rotting root vegetables. It looks as though whatever they had harvested has not kept, and it's coming up on winter. This is a very dire circumstance. It's freezing in here, colder than it was in the inn, colder than it was in the attic. It's bizarre. It's oddly quiet. You see that as you are continuing down this root cellar, shining your light around, it casts this dim glow. You're stepping and avoiding bugs. They're crawling up your skirt and you can feel them. Your resolve strengthens. You see that it seems cavernous. It continues onward. The ceiling's black and and craggy looking. It is impossibly long. It, it must go on for easily a mile. There are maggots crawling on the bags of root vegetables. There's this strong gust of wind. On the air, you can hear bits, shouts, whispers, phrases. Albert, my love, my right to decline. You were everything to me. You let Pyrie kill me, and I will. Katya! Hilma. Your ears perk up at the name Hilma. I've seen things none of you could ever. My name was danced in Paris, and you see a vision before you. A young man, a bit in threadbare clothes, a bit bedraggled looking, almost as if he's been kind of tucked into a, a suit that maybe he's outgrown. He's lanky, handsome, a bit careworn. And his eyes are glittering with love. You see him turn to the side as if he is perceiving someone behind him. And as you see this happen, you see a slit in his neck open, this massive red gash, and you see a, a gout of blood spray across the room. You reflexively pull back as almost to be hit by it in the face, and you hear the blood gushing out, and you hear his attempts to scream, only gurgling sounds heard. As he stands there, you see that his body decays in an instant, this skeletal creature before you. You see that the eyes have melted away and they contain maggots and wasps buzzing and crawling around. The mouth goes slack. You see the bony teeth, the figure of the revenant that you saw in the attic. Give me a fear test. value is one because you've seen him before i got one you got one you know who this is you pause you summon your resolve what do you do what do you know of hilma you see his gnarled teeth shifting in his mouth. Helma, one of the traitors. She was here at the witch cat inn, having conversations with Albert. A society member with only her own greed at heart. I am her granddaughter. You see him <sighs> and rush at your face. He is inches away. And tell me, why should I not kill you now for it? Because it would not make you peaceful. 
I seek not peace. And as he does, his rotting breath rolling over you again, you're getting splayed with bugs on your face. I seek vengeance. The people upon whom you seek vengeance are all dead. Like you. Lies. Would you seek revenge on all their progeny? I seek revenge on them. I know they are here. <laughs> Come to see the play. I know you're all here, Hilma. I know Albert's in there. Katya. I read. <laughs> they are not. They are dead. So you may have your revenge on innocent people, but it will not sate your desires. What else do you do to convince him in this moment? I drop the uh, letter opener that I have and I set the lantern down and I take out the little pistol that I have tucked away and I throw that aside as well so that he sees that I'm completely unarmed. Your story is a sad one. And I am sorry for my ancestor's part in it. If I could make it right, I would. But that is not a possibility. I will tell your story, the truth of it, and leave out no detail, no matter how ugly, no matter how sad, so that people will know that you were wronged. You created such a beautiful craft and you deserve to be remembered for that and not for this make a manipulation plus empathy roll please Two successes. Two successes. You see, as the wind has been howling around you, whipping your hair about you, you have felt the, the crawling of these insects and these vermin over your feet and ankles up into your skirt. You felt the rotted, cold breath rolling over you, and you see him <sighs> slacken a bit. The wind dies down. The dust settles. You see from this grotesque figure of the dead, his flesh coming to his face again, the brightness of his eyes, pale and ghostly in front of you, a, a wisp, translucent. Help me, please. Please, I beg you. How would you like to be remembered? My bones lie there. I was buried in a shallow grave. 
on on holy ground defaced by magic Albert saw it as a means of protecting the society but knew not what hell he wrought I don't think he ever loved me please Bury me properly. My friend is a priest. He will do right by you. Thank you. Thank you. And as he relaxes, the wind completely dies down. The vermin vanish from your feet. The root cellar has seemingly come back to an understandable size. And you see that there is a a, uh, a place in the earth that seems to be somewhat loosely packed a different color from the rest of the floor there. I'm going to use my hands to dig there because I don't want any further harm to come to his bones. I don't want to accidentally strike them with a tool. Sure. So I will just start gently digging in the earth. As you dig in the earth, you find a burlap sack Inside it, you open and you see a collection of human bones. And as you hold your lantern above it, you see the carved, almost etched, seemingly, of course, no other means by magic, are these bastardized runes. They are not anything that could conjure anything but evil as you replace the bones back in the bag and stand up. We're out of combat, Per Hewlin on the ground in the mud with the cook laying beside him, seriously wounded. Uh, Anders, you watching your beau, your affianced something. Having gone through the window, Officer Kensington standing in the door, you hear the commotion of Lisa coming up the stairs, having stopped. You don't hear the struggling sounds of Father Clarid under the table. The cook is inert next to you. You're rousing yourself, pulling yourself out of the mud. What did the three of you do? Oh, uh, I feel like I just fell from the second story window of a building. Uh, can I get a hand, Anders? You call up to him, who is still on the second floor. Um, you are a doctor, yes, are you not? Uh, oh, don't move. Um, Anders is going to turn back around, and I think as he um, sees Lisa there, he'll he'll just pale, and um, oh goodness, no! Um, it, how is she doing? <laughs> I assume she's bleeding still quite a lot. I think uh, she is. Yes, yeah. I'm yeah. going to uh, be blustering behind. Anders and literally push him out of the way oh, and uh, uh, and try to attend to this bleeding woman who has just come out of a possession basically. Yes, she is com- she's not responsive as this happens. You're just, you're tending to her wounds. You're patching her as best you can. Um, the cook is still kind of face down in the mud. She's breathing shallowly, but she's she's pretty injured herself. Um, Andrews would then 
swing around the the house to go help pair out of the mud. Sure. As you do, you find him there kind of squelchily pulling himself out. You've absolutely sprained an ankle pretty egregiously. Uh, You probably have a broken wrist. Anders will slip his arm over over his shoulder and help uh, hold him up as he hops out of the mud. Ugh. What happened? I don't know, but they stopped. They stopped. I suppose Penny ran to the cellar, I I guess. Um, Guess She must have done something. Uh, Yes. Let's go and see. I think I fell on a straight razor. Ow. Oh. You help him up, he's limping. Ugh. As they're starting to limp over, Penny makes her way to the top of the stairs and emerges from the cellar. She's holding a burlap sack in her hand. You do it? I found Oscar. Pair, we will need to bury him on sacred ground. Church should suffice for that. Do we have the remains yet? I believe they are all contained in this sack. They have been desecrated. So perhaps an extra blessing would be warranted. I can see to it. Let's uh, make our way to the church. Do you collect Kensington on the way? Yeah. Yeah. Kensington's seen his fair share of battle wounds and is able to patch up Lisa as best he can. You all tromp through the mud. Your feet are cold and wet. You're exhausted. Penny looks particularly pale. Per Hewlin is having to lean on both Anders and Kensington in order to get there. But you make your way to the church through the cemetery gate and find a plot of land where there's no headstone. the hole dug already or is this a we have to make a incidentally yes it being the only churchyard around for some radius there is a hole already dug you can hear a sigh of relief from kensington that he doesn't have to fucking dig this hole to um i will direct them to place the bones in an appropriate manner um, in the um, in the hole uh, whilst uh, whilst we they, they bend to that I will go over to is there like an old tree or something like that around here that I could fashion a quick uh, cross out of Yes, you do find a couple of broken branches that you could quickly tie. I'll come back, and as they're finishing burying him, I will uh, plant the cross. I'll take out the rest of the holy water that I add. Um, I will spray it along around the cross, and I'll say, did we find out anything about him? Do we know anything about him? Yes, this would be an opportunity for each of you to contribute to this ritual. I assume nobody knew him, but do we know anything about him? He was an artist. 
He worked as a writer and spent time in Paris. That's it. That's all we know about him, who he was, what happened. He was murdered. By Pyrie. And Albert. And Albert. And Hilma. Because he was trying to take away Pyrie's wife. No. No, I, Christian knows that because Christian oh. watched, but my character has no fucking clue. So I'm trying to get her to Excellent say Excellent RP. <laughs> Within character. Because he tried to take away Irie's wife. Well, I call them murders. It's quite senseless. I find myself reluctant to give him the proper final sacraments. Any creature who is motivated by such hatred as to take out their fury on the innocent does not deserve in, peaceful rest. In his last moments with me, he asked for help. And you have always said that no one is beyond forgiveness. Does that not even extend beyond death? Wrath is one of the seven deadly sins. And to visit it not only on those who harmed you, but on the innocent. Yeah. Is grace are made. and mercy not stronger than wrath? And have we all not done things that are regrettable, to say the least? I think that Kensington it very weakly uh, drops to his knees, head bowed. Would you condemn me, father? For what? What sin have you committed? all i'm sure in time wrath i i killed my wife's lover and this the this whole everything here has hit too close to home and i have been I have been uh, maybe shown some sloth behaviors and and letting you take the lead and 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 just shying away from making any decisions here tonight and And I am guilty of greed and the list goes on lust This is the way to end this. And what other innocents could be affected by this if we don't stop this now? There is... Angels will put a hand on your shoulder and just... Give it a squ- 
There is perhaps a lesson to be learned here. One that none of us are blameless, none of us are without sin, without marks on our souls. None of us, as I said to Anders earlier, get to sit in judgment on anybody else, I guess. Good for the Almighty, of course. But if there is one lesson that I have learned from all of this, it is that I was wrong. That there is no place in this world for this kind of maliciousness to coexist. With the world that God has intended for us. And I have also learned that I am perhaps not worthy of serving God in this manner. And so I will finish the right and bless the ground that he's on. And when I'm done, I'll remove my priest collar. And I'll drop it on the grave. Standing off at the back of the cemetery is the ghostly figure of a young, lanky man watching quietly, sadly, as the collar falls and lands on the earth. He glances up at you all, raises a hand, and vanishes from view. It's at this moment that Penny Hemp collapses, unconscious. Epilogue. You find yourselves in the society house in Uppsala, several weeks after the encounter with Oscar Hjort and the happenings of the Witch Light Inn. Sammy has been arrested under allegations of abuse. Sophia has taken over the Witchlight Inn and expanded it out in the hopes of building a theater that she can house actors in. The cook recovered from her broken femur and is a bit saltier than she probably was prior to the incident. Lisa has difficult time trusting people and certainly has devilish nightmares about long wicked blades. Father Clara doesn't recall the incidents too readily. He knows he had a broken rib or two, but resumed his work at the church. Officer Kensington, Dr. Falk, and Herr Hewlin, the father sitting there in a fine suit, but no cleric collar at his throat. You're all enjoying a tea or a brandy. It's early evening. You pause, take a moment. You raise a glass. Instinctively, this trio of friends, colleagues, perhaps just acquaintances raises their glass saying, to Penny, you take a sip, you place it on the end table. One of you reaches into your jacket pocket and retrieves a letter. And I will leave that to Deb to indicate who and read it for us. 
Pear, you pull this letter out of your pocket. It had arrived with a manuscript of a book about a priest and a doctor. And this is what the letter says. Pear, I was not born with the sight as I once told you. It is true that my grandmother Hilma was a member of the society, but I wrote my first book and after the success it brought me, I craved the fame and fortune, the accolades. Yet the years went by and nothing I wrote after was good enough. A quarter of a century went by and my name fell by the wayside. So I did something foolish. I invoked the Vaisin in order to make a deal. The Vaitir gave me the sight and promised me that my next book would be my most prolific yet, but that it must be written in my own blood. But as you know, the Vaisin are cunning, and there was a small detail which I did not know when the deal was struck. Once the blood is on the page, my body would not replenish it. The very thing that would raise my name above its former glory would surely kill me. I have felt myself growing weaker over, over these past months as I have been writing, but it was only on this final adventure that I realized the truth. I could have chosen to set down my quill and weather out my days in feeble obscurity. But as I discovered the truth, I realized what story must be told. Your love for the good doctor is not shameful, my friend. It is simple and true. And the world will give you a happy ending. I have seen to it. Forever your friend, Penny. I think Per will read the letter. Look at his two companions. He'll fold it, reach down, throw it on the fire, and say, Pride goeth before the fall. And lean back in his chair for another drink. And that, my friends, is a dance of dreams. Thank you all so very much for playing. <laughs>